Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I haven't really done a celebrity home review in a while and I used to do them all the time, all the Architectural Digest videos I used to watch, but I never really thought to do one on Chip and Joanna Gaines. But since I've kind of been on the trend of talking about Modern Farmhouse, I thought what better time to actually discuss the king and queen of Modern Farmhouse than right now. And they actually did a new home renovation that's actually quite different to what I used to know them as. So this new home that they've been renovating has been a bit of a mix between Spanish Revival and mid-century. It was built in 1965 and is quite a unique looking space as well. Let's look at the specs that they've got first. So built in 1965, 5,100 square feet plus, 1990s remodel, five bed, five bath, pool, 1.5 acres and a lakefront view. Wow, that sounds good. So this is the outside of the house before they've renovated it. And honestly, when I looked at this, I was like, I hope they really do not touch this because there's only a few small tweaks that need to be done. And thankfully for me, they didn't touch it very much. And they actually did the things that I would have personally have done as well. So the trim, they have gone ahead and painted in this really dark brown. Personally, I probably would have done a black, but I actually prefer what they've done here. They've just created a bit of contrast, which is needed to make that brick pop and not look so tired and worn. They even kept the actual original lighting as well, which makes me so happy because usually nine times out of 10, people do get rid of the original stuff and that stuff is so unique, so beautiful, and it's never gonna be made again. So the fact that they were able to keep that, love it. They also updated the actual landscaping and I think that was certainly necessary. The outside beforehand didn't really have much of a personality in terms of the landscaping and was very overgrown. So next up is the courtyard. Again, same sort of deal. I like the fact that they have a courtyard. I feel like a courtyard isn't something that you really get very frequently unless you are like in an apartment sort of area where you don't really get the space of it. And plus a courtyard is really, really common for like traditionally mid-century homes. Usually they'd have just like a little like square cutout and you kind of get to be able to walk around it like a U shape. And I think those are so cool. I think it's a really interesting, unique design. And especially when there isn't too many windows on the other side and it doesn't create too much of an invasion of privacy. I think those are so cool. And they've definitely been able to keep that here and just update it again. So again, they just updated with the painting. Love it. I love the fact that they kept the tiles. There is a koi pond at the back there and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Because it's called a lake house, I kind of have the perception of, okay, people probably aren't going to be here all the time. But if someone's buying this sort of property, you can kind of imagine that they'll probably have people that are there to maintain it. So much of a muchness really, but love the outside. Looks amazing. Actually looks like a new modern build almost just by the change of a paint color. And that's what I love about paint. Paint can do so much. And sometimes you don't realize it until you create that change. Next up is the entry. And I'm a little bit mixed feeling about this. I am someone that loves mid-century design. So this is definitely more geared towards someone like myself. And I do really like certain aspects of it. Number one, I love the staircase looks beautiful. I love the fact that it's got that like almost like velvety green wraparound on it. Very mid-century, even just from that era, like you don't see that in newer builds. And I love that idea actually. I also love the door and the fact that they've restored it back to the original timber. And I love like walnut looking timber. So very much so a fan. There are a few things I dislike. So I actually don't really like the flooring. So the flooring is this like terrazzo color, but you can't really tell, especially from the photos or from afar that it's terrazzo. And personally, I would have liked something that was a little bit more, maybe Spanish revival that was a bit more obvious, whether that be a terrazzo that was a little bit more on the nose or something that was a little bit more like a Spanish tile. I think someone that is really unique with that more Spanish sort of look is Justina Blakeney. I've actually done quite a few videos on her because I think she's really cool, but she has a Spanish sort of home and she really leans into it. So far, all I'm seeing is more of the mid-century stuff, but I know that usually one style will take a certain level against another one. And so far it just feels very mid-century. And my only fear with this is that Okay, you've said that you want to do mid-century and Spanish Revival. Well, currently all I see is a cactus in here that kind of gives me the Spanish Revival look. I don't really see the rest of the Spanish Revival because this looks very mid-century to me. But in saying that, I do like it. It does look very beautiful. I just don't like the flooring. 
Another thing that I do really like is actually up top there, there's just like the ceiling. I don't even know what to call them. It's kind of like the architraves, but it's on the middle of the ceiling. I don't think I've ever really seen that before, aside from like timber beams. So very unique. I think that was from the original home. I really like that. I really like that. I am a little apprehensive of the green tile that's on the side of the staircase. Originally when I saw it, I did really like it, but when we go through the space, I just feel like it's a bit too repetitive and we'll see that in a second. So next up is the library. This library kind of just looks like a normal library. It doesn't look anything crazy. The bookcase doesn't have any real amazing details about it that screams mid-century or the Spanish revival. So it just kind of looks like a normal room. But then when they go ahead and change it out, it looks like a fully mid-century sort of living space. And I like certain aspects of it and I'll start with things I like and then I'll talk about the things I dislike. I love the fact that they kept the original hardwood floors. All they did was sanded and restained. Thank you. I feel like hardwood floors are so hard to find these days. I am so happy that they've kept that. Next thing, I do love the paint color. As much as I do think this color is repeated a little bit too much throughout the entire home, I love how moody it feels, especially on the ceiling. And this is kind of how I would recommend someone doing a space that they want to create a moody vibe is to paint the ceiling with the same color as the walls. The other thing I love is that grass cloth that is on the back of that bookcase. It just adds a texture and a warmth that isn't really achievable with paint and isn't really achievable in the same way with timber. And just that contrast between that warm sort of oatmeal color with the walnut and then the green, match made in heaven. Honestly, I think the thing that they got down really well in this entire home is just the color palette I am in love with. There are just other things that I just don't quite agree with that I think could be better. Number one, those Damn chairs. I don't know what it is with this like postmodern sort of look, but I know for a fact that those chairs are not something you're going to sit and read on for the next three hours. When I'm in a library, I want to find a very comfortable space and just be there for ages. And these chairs, not doing it for me. Other thing as well, not a huge fan of the table either. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. It just feels a little bit too white and stark for the space because everything else is really moody. It's kind of got like that warmer tone to it, whereas that feels white and bright in comparison. Also don't really like the rug. I don't like any of the rugs in the space, which is something I'm gonna be talking about, but it is a Magnolia thing. So the brand that they have is Magnolia Network now. Obviously they started out as Fixer Upper and then created Magnolia Network and have all of these different design shows. Of course, they've gone ahead and capitalized on it and have this whole store and everything. And they've just continued to build and build and build. And you can pretty much buy all of these things from their catalog, which I am not opposed to, but I do feel like it's a little bit out of touch for the rest of this space. So not a huge fan of that either. The lighting, I'm a bit yes and no about. I like it because it's quirky, but I also don't like it because I feel like the brass is just a bit off. I feel like brass is such a hard material to get right. And there's always just slight variations. And sometimes it's just a little too yellow gold for me not a fan. I don't see any Spanish revival in the space and I feel like Spanish revival throughout the home isn't really shown. There's just a cactus put in the corner and they're like, yep, tick, Spanish done. And I just, it bothers me. I don't think that that's enough of the Spanish revival to really actually get a full in-depth picture of it. When I think Spanish revival, I think of the beautiful colored tiles. I think of the lime washed sort of walls and that almost, natural sort of look to it. I think of the fact that there's usually a bit of brick around and all of these more natural materials coming through. Currently it feels very subdued, very mid-century, and they're kind of just sticking to that theme too much that it feels a little bit like this place hasn't been touched in forever and that it is just a bit of a theme of that era rather than kind of building on it. But it changes a little bit in the next couple of spaces. I just don't think in the best way possible. Okay, so this is the living room. Obviously we've got the fireplace here, which finally we're starting to see some of that Spanish revival, especially in this before picture. It's a little bit more of that curved architecture that you do see in Spanish revival spaces that are a little bit more like 
pointy. I don't really know what the specific word is for it. It's not like a traditional arch where it's perfectly circle. It's kind of like arched, but then has a little bow to it. And I was really worried that they were potentially going to ruin this fireplace or knock it down or just get rid of it in some way, shape or form. This is another angle of the space where you can see into, I think that was like, like a sunroom, which they do end up changing into the kitchen, which we will see shortly. It just kind of looks like a normal space. It looks a little dark and dreary. Something that they did change was actually the windows. So the windows are just like average height here. They've actually added like an extra foot on top and they've gone all the way almost to the actual beams. Look, not a necessity, but it certainly makes it feel far more grand. Okay, so this is the fireplace. <laughs> I've got some issues with it. First of all, I feel like this is the only space that has that Spanish revival look. And I feel like they really missed a golden opportunity to have some of those Spanish tiles. I personally feel like this is a very trendy version of Spanish revival, especially with the bookcases being curved. And the other thing I dislike, and I've said this before on the channel because I used to work in paint. I dislike when people use lime wash everywhere because it is the worst type of paint to have your grotty little hands all over. Sure, it's nice on a feature wall or and it's nice on a wall that you do not touch, but to have it looking like it's actually also on something that you're going to touch, which is the shelving, that's not gonna last very long before it looks really dirty. The thing with lime wash is that as beautiful as it is, it does pick up on all of those imperfections. And as soon as you put your fingerprints there, and especially when you do it a couple of times, those fingerprints are gonna stay there until you repaint that entire space. And mind you, you can't do touch-ups with lime wash. You have to repaint the entire wall. Otherwise you're gonna see the touch-up. Again, another cactus. What is it with the cacti and thinking that that's enough for Spanish Revival? I just don't see it. I really don't. I wish that the Spanish Revival was more obvious. I feel like this is the only wall where they attempted to do more Spanish Revival, but they just did the trendy version of like having the curved everything. And personally, I really like curved stuff. I do really love curved architecture, but in this space, it is too much and it just continues to get more and more curved and it's just overused to the point where it's just like come on show me something else show me some more substance to this style rather than just relying on this curved architecture I'm not a huge fan of the light in here either don't really love the coffee table either again another trendy piece I just don't think it's quite right for the space I do however like the rug that I actually like I feel like that's a little bit more leaning into that more colorful aesthetic. Do not like the lighting at all. I don't like the lighting on the wall. I don't like the lighting on the ceiling. I think something that they really struggled with with this home is the lighting. And again, they are using Magnolia Homes to obviously subset some of it. And I just don't think it's quite right. I just don't think the lighting's quite there. It's quirky, it's cool, sure, but I would have preferred if they were able to find a vintage piece that, you know, had been from that era and was a one of a kind piece because that would have just been far more authentic and just look a lot more polished because that specific chandelier, whatever you want to call it, looks cheap. Everything else in the space, like from every other angle, for the most part looks really nice and looks high end and looks like it's, you know, meant to be there. And then you look at the lighting and you're like, you look like you cheaped out on it. And it's unfortunate. Again, I really love the ceiling. I don't know, like that beams, they could have easily have gone ahead and stripped and put like timber back into it. But I actually like that because it kind of allows the busyness of the space to just chill out a little bit. And I do feel like it's a little too themed. It just, there's so many mid-century pieces. I'm not seeing much of that Spanish sort of revival or even just pieces that are from other styles that you could incorporate in. If I didn't know that this was the two of them, Chip and Joanna Gaines, I probably wouldn't have expected this from them. It is very different to the original stuff they used to do. And I love the fact that they're trying to progress and change up what they know. And I think they've done a good job in the sense that they are showing, hey, we can do other things. But in saying that, it just feels like a copy and paste of the butterfly home with a whole bunch of trends. Especially once we move into the kitchen, you can see it in this picture from the uh, living room. Again, you can see that curved archway. 
I love the fact that they opened it up in comparison to the old space. I think they needed that for it to feel a little bit more open. And because it's a lake house, you want people to be able to interact with each other throughout the home. So I love the fact that they did that. But then once like, we move into the kitchen, it just feels too much. If they had just done this and then, you know, left the curves behind or just done another one or two, I would have been okay. But let's count how many that we see in the next space because it just gets a little bit crazy. It actually gets too crazy for me. When I first saw this kitchen, I was like, oh, Oh wow, this is nice. But upon further review, there are quite a few things that I dislike about it. But again, I'll start with the things that I like and then I'll roast them. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I like, I love the flooring. The flooring, I feel like is the first glimpse of the Spanish Revival that they've actually added in and is obvious. Honestly, Spanish Revival and Spanish tile can be a little bit on the heavier sort of side, especially in terms of color saturation. And I'm glad that they found something that, you know, was minimal enough for them, but was bold enough for it to be a bit more of an obvious sort of statement. Love it. I also love the timber in the space. It's just something throughout the entire home that I absolutely adore. And when I saw this picture in particular, I like died a little bit inside, especially like the really top bit of that timber built in. Oh, I love it. And that's where I love like the curved architecture. Like it's more of those subtle details where it's like, oh, I love this. Like, you know, it kind of goes with this and that it's much more subtle. And I just wish that they kind of stopped there in terms of the curves because they just got a little carried away with everything. I do like some of the more trendy things. So the shelf is obviously a very trendy thing to have in a kitchen at the moment, but then having the curved edges of the marbling and then the curved range hood and then the curved counter on one side and then the curved coffee bar. It's just, there's, there's too many things going on. There's too many curvatures. I do think it's really unique with the actual marble, the type of face that it has on the island. I think that's really unique and a bit different. It is something that is, I've noticed is starting to come into style as having this double bull nose sort of look. I know I've been saying that there's too many curves, but if it was just like that, the entryway, and then also the top of the actual uh, cabinetry, and those were the only things that were curved, chef's kiss would have been beautiful. But especially with the coffee bar, I do feel like it's just a little too trendy, a little bit too like on the nose for what it is. And just a little bit, what's the word? I'm looking for a word, basic? <laughs> I don't want to be like mean in that sense, but like, I feel like I'm a little bit scarred by the whole like curved arch painted onto the wall. It just kind of reminds me of that. I don't think it really was necessary. I feel like it could have looked a lot nicer if they had just completely vetoed that idea. One thing I do really love is the timber pools on the cabinetry. I think that isn't something that people do very frequently and it is definitely a very mid-century thing to do. And oh, I just love it. I don't really love the lighting. Again, looks cheap. I don't love the rain, uh, the rain house, the range hood. I don't even know why I thought it was a rain house, but anyway, I don't really like the range hood. I feel like I would have liked to see something a little bit maybe on the, I know it's gonna sound crazy, maybe on the modern farmhouse sort of side. I was expecting maybe a timber range hood. And I think, you know, there is a lot of timber going on. So I understand why they probably didn't do it. But I was expecting a little bit more of like their old style to kind of come through. And I know that they're trying to get away from that. It's very obvious in the space. It feels just like they've tried to throw in as many trends as physically possible while also sticking to that mid-century look, which is very, very in vogue at the moment. The pantry is cute. I do like the pantry. Again, I do think it's just an over exertion of the mid-century look, but what can you do? The dining room was where I was kind of hoping that they were going to leave certain features, specifically the windows, especially because they were already going in on all of these curvature looks. I was like, okay, for sure they're gonna keep it. I feel like this is the first time we see the Spanish revival a bit more obvious in a space from the original home as well. So I was hoping they were gonna keep them. They did not, and I have beef with them. They decided to add in a giant window that kind of goes with the rest of the space, which I don't blame them for because I know that they want to try and keep things consistent, but I just feel like that was like one little bit of the Spanish revival that was kind of from the original home and they didn't keep it. Of course, it probably wouldn't have been as nice as what they've got, but I think it would have been cool and a little bit more 
unique to the space instead of having everything the same giant windows and all that. I do like the skylights, definitely adds in a lot of natural lighting and I do love those uh, ceiling, I don't even know what to call them, ceiling molding, like I don't, it, it's unique. I've never actually seen anything like this before. I think it's really cool and I'm glad that they've just kind of kept it as is. The lighting, god damn it, the lighting, ugh, just, we're gonna bypass that. Actually, no, we won't bypass it because there is one set of lighting that I do like, which is on the opposing wall. Again, feels super mid-century. I don't think there's anything that says kind of Spanish revival to me here, but I do really love the lighting in this. I love the grass wall cloth. It feels very warm. And I love the fact that it's kind of been framed out with the timber and then has the beautiful mid-century piece. And I, I do like it. I mean, I am someone that loves mid-century, so it's not like I don't dislike it. But it, I'm just, based off of what I know, I'm like, okay, well, where's, are we, are we going to see another cactus? Is, is that the plan? Like, <laughs> again, curvature hits again with the whole space. Like even to the point of the artwork has a curve to it. And look, this is where I'm just like, okay, there's just too much curvature. We need some level of structure. We need some things to not be completely curved. And I feel like this is the only way that the, Spanish Revival comes through is the curved furniture. And mind you, that's already a mid-century thing as well. Like mid-century design had a lot of curvature as well, especially in the furniture. So it's like, where is it? Based off of what I know of the space and what you guys have said, where is it? Because I'm expecting another cactus at this point. Again, do not like the rug at all. Do not like the dining table either. I feel like it's too trendy and it's just something that isn't really unique to the space. I would have really preferred something maybe that actually was a little bit more pointy and maybe a rectangle and more of that traditional looking mid-century space, even though I said that I really want Spanish Revival. I feel like the curves are just being overused at this point. I do, however, like the chrome on the chairs. I think sometimes mixing metals can look really nice if you can pull it off. Again, I don't like the gold or the brass in the lighting, but I do really like the chrome. So at least we've got points there for the metals in this respect. And look, this is where we can finally see the entry connects up with the dining room, which has that green wall. I don't dislike the wall, but just with the amount of that green that's come throughout the space, usually when you want to use the same color, I would almost recommend varying it to certain degrees. So then it just doesn't feel like you're color blocking every single spot that you're in. I'm not opposed to it because it does add that much needed structure, especially against all that curvature, but I don't know. I'm a little bit apprehensive towards it at this point. Although I've been saying throughout this entire thing that there's too much mid-century, there's not enough Spanish revival. There is one room where I'm like, okay, it is pretty much all mid-century, but I love it. And that is the rec room. This rec room is really cool. As much as I don't think it's functional as a rec room, I do think it's very, very beautiful. I love the wall paneling and I love the lighting. For once, this is the room that I actually like the lighting. I like the lighting on the walls. I love the fact that they've got that green sort of tone to them. And I like the chrome on the ceiling. I also love that fireplace. That's actually very mid-century and very true to the home. That's not there from the original sort of space. So they've added that in. Very much so like it. The gripes that I do have with the space are the actual pieces of furniture. The colors are beautiful. I love the colors in the space. I think the colors they've gotten down so, so perfectly. But in terms of functionality, that booth does not look comfortable at all for a rec room. And that chair, I know for a fact you'll sit in it and you won't be able to get out. At least I like the rug in this room. So I'm looking at the mud room now and the original space kind of looks like it's a continuation off of a kitchen or like a pantry or something like that. And then we go to their new space and it's like, whoa, okay. Again, very mid-century. We're not gonna talk about the lighting. I hate that light, except for the blue one. The blue one's cool, finally. But the flooring is a bit weird. I like the fact that it's checkered, but it's kind of got like two patterns going at once. I'm assuming that must also be in the other space as well. Yeah, it is. You just can't tell because of the rug. I. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I do really love the color of it. I love the checkered look, but I feel like it would have been nicer if it was just a stereotypical trekker look. Cause this is kind of playing tricks on my eyes. And I know that's probably the point, but when you're kind of walking throughout your house, you don't really want to be going like 
oh, is there a step there? Or like getting confused by the fact that your floor looks like an optical illusion. I love the arched window. Again, I really wish that the dining room had it. I think that would have been really cool to kind of pair those two spaces together. But here it does look really nice. I just, again, where's, where's the Spanish Revival? I feel like this could have been a really fun space where you could have done something really cool and crazy, especially with Spanish tile, or even just like with the texture of the walls. Like the walls just feel like they're very plain and very simple, which look, that is part of the mid-century look. Usually the walls would be white and then the timber kind of, you know, is the, is the feature piece. Not arguing with that, but where's the Spanish revival? Like, is it really just in the arch? OG laundry, literally, again, looks like an extension of a pantry or something like that. The new laundry, it looks cute. Don't get me wrong, it does look cute. I do like aspects of it, which is the timber. I do not like the tile though. Personally, not a huge fan of it. I like that it's consistent with the kitchen, sure. And it has its own voice in comparison to the kitchen and comparison to the other spaces but I'm not a huge fan of that yellow. I'm not sure what it is. I just feel like they could have really mixed in that yellow tile, maybe with a Spanish tile. And that could have really tied the two looks together, but they've just missed that opportunity. All right, we've got two more rooms to do and then we'll be done. So first we've got the primary bedroom and then we'll have the master bath. The primary bedroom doesn't really have much personality in the beginning. You know, it's just kind of looks like a normal bedroom, quite a nice size though, which is very cool. And then they go ahead and add their magic in. And again, I'm over the whole arches. There's too many. I hate the <laughs> lighting and it just feels far too mid-century. Honestly, I do really like the look in terms of the colors. The colors are perfect. I love the fact they went with the grass cloth in this bedroom. It definitely adds a warmth and a texture to it that I really like. I do feel like they've missed out on a potential opportunity on the ceiling. I don't know what. But when you look at the space, you're like, wow, that looks great. And then the ceiling's just white coming down on you. I feel like a lot of designers do actually miss out on the opportunity to do something cool on the ceiling, whether that be putting wallpaper on the ceiling or adding a new color of some kind. It feels very mid-century again, the same critique that I've been saying the entire way through. Dislike, <laughs> pretty much everything that I dislike in the rest of the space, I dislike here. Dislike the rug, dislike the lighting. I love the timber as usual. I do feel like the headboard, as much as it's cool, I do feel like the arches is just a bit too much. And at that point, it's almost like, do you need that green part of the headboard? Could you have just had the timber? I think it's good for zoning the actual bed area. I do think it's kind of necessary, but in terms of the curves, why so many curves? They were just on a field trip of trying to add as many curves as possible. We should actually be counting these curves. I should have counted all of these. Maybe you can do that and you can let me know in the comments below. Let's do that. This is a different angle. Again, so many curves did not need to be done. I'm not denying that it doesn't look good. I love the timber look. It looks great, very mid-century, but again, just, it feels a little bit of a time warp. It doesn't feel like it's a home that's actually available now because it feels so stuck in the mid-century that you can't even see their sort of flair as designers anymore like of course they were huge in the sort of modern farmhouse sort of era and you know have built their brand off of that i feel like the only areas that i'm seeing them are in their rugs because they sell them and the crap lighting primary bathroom or the master bath very quirky very cool at the beginning um I find the these glass sort of tile things were super trendy back in the day. You definitely don't see them now. And I like the fact that it was like really quirky and all green. I do kind of wish they kept the tub, but that would have been cool. But even like, I know it wouldn't have probably been functionable, but I really like that curved sort of glass uh, shower. I think that's really interesting and different, but unfortunately they didn't keep any of that. They've gone ahead and modernized it. I do like it upon first viewing. It does look very beautiful, but it doesn't feel like a home. It feels like a super luxe sort of hotel that you get to go to. I do like the fact that the showers are interesting, like brown sort of color, but it feels industrial and it feels, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not there. It's fine, we'll continue again. Where's the Spanish influence? Uh, it's in a cactus, yes. And maybe the floor rug, question mark. And maybe like that little rattan side 
table thing next to the tub. There are accents that I do like. Like I do like the little ledge that has the marbling that's built into both the actual shower and in the bath sort of area. But there are other things that I dislike. My biggest concern is the fact that the shower area doesn't have any tiles. That's my worry. And also the shower head looks so tiny. You've got this massive ass shower and then you got a shower head that's like this big. Like I'd feel ripped off if I paid for that. <laughs> it just feels very stereotypically mid-century, like every aspect of it. Like they didn't venture out of it in any way. Like you've got the curved mirrors, you've got the curved bit in the shower, you've got the fluting in the shower as well. You've got the typical more like mid-century floating sort of uh, cabinetry. The tiles, I actually don't mind. They're pretty cool. But I, again, I feel like that was a lost specific moment for the Spanish influence to come through. Those are the spaces that I wanted to show you guys. Let me know what you guys think because I feel like I'm being very critical, even though this is a style that I do like. And I love the fact that they've gone ahead and explored out of their modern farmhouse era. It makes me very happy. But I do feel like there is a level of improvement that needs to be done. Number one is just the finer details and also recognizing when you've used something too much. Sometimes the smallest changes can create the biggest impact. And I think that's something that they're kind of missing here. So, so something like the door hinges to the architraves and all of those smaller architectural sort of things that sometimes get overlooked end up having actually the biggest impact than the more grand big pieces. As I said with the kitchen, the piece that I loved the most was that tiny bit up top, which had the curvature in it. I just feel like they need to kind of recognize when to hold back on certain aspects and when to actually go full throttle and things. I do feel like that they missed out on a huge opportunity with the Spanish influence. Yes, it can sometimes be a very pared back look or you can go with a more maximalist look. And if you are curious to see some more of that Spanish influence, I'd highly recommend checking out my video on Justina Blakeney. She is so cool and so full of life and so is her design style as well. Very colorful, probably not for the average person, but you start to see certain aspects of that Spanish design come through and it's just not seen here. I do love mid-century design. I'm not saying that, you know, they did bad in that respect, but the parts that they did add in are very trendy pieces, especially like in the kitchen. And I feel like they could have just held back on a couple of those things and really allowed the Spanish influence to shine and create a more unique and timeless look. But let me know what you guys think in the comments and I will see you on our next internet adventure.